Um, we are recording the session so that it is available to you when you want to refer back. My name is Quintress Sefala and I am your presenter for today. I'm joined by my moderator and colleague today who is Zodumo. So today we will be presenting to you um, introduction to digital teaching. Just before we begin, I just wanted to make sure that is everybody ready so we could start. If you are joining with your phone and you have your laptop by the side and you have downloaded Microsoft Teams, that will be great because as I take you through the platform, you'll be able to play as well on your laptop. So let's 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 begin. I hope you do enjoy our session today. All right, like I said today, I am your presenter, Quintre Sefala, and we have our producer and moderator, Uzo Dumo. Um, also, you can follow us on Schoolnet South Africa. You can follow us on Schoolnet South Africa as well as um, myself on Twitter. I am Quintress underscore Sefala, and Zodumo is Zodumo M on Twitter if you want to follow us look back and see what you are talking about with regards to the topic and also it's it's very it's 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 good to inform your participants that the call is being recorded so that it is aligned with a with the new popia act all right so now our learning targets for today so like i said today's session is preparing for digital teaching so we will look at um, the differences between face-to-face -face teaching, digital teaching, as well as distance learning. Um, and one of the two differences there in digital teaching, we have synchronized and asynchronous teaching or learning rather, and we will just look at that um, further. And we'll also look at the consideration for digital teaching. What should you consider when you, when you use digital tools to, to teach and to also learn? We will then learn about Microsoft Teams, um, the features and functionalities of Teams, and then we will explore it. So I will take you through Teams as a digital tool where you will see how it works and how you can create your team with your students. And also you will participate on a team so that you can practice uh, using an online collaborative communication space. So this is you now um, practicing. So I will be your host and you will be my participants or students for today. So take it that way. All right. So what is the difference between face to face teaching, digital teaching as well as distance learning? So this is a question I am posing to you. Um, if I have any answer, I would like some participation. What is the difference between face to face digital teaching as well as distance learning. If you have an answer for me, do raise your hand or mute unmute your mic and do comment. What is the so face to face teaching is basically our traditional teaching. So basically it refers to um, the physical teaching method that is currently happening. Well, it used to happen a lot before COVID-19, but now we are trying to move to the digital teaching space. But with face-to-face -face spacing, um, teaching is when you and your students are in a classroom together and there's a live interaction between you and your students. And then we have digital teaching. So digital teaching is when you use digital tools or technology during uh, a teaching and learning. So. Um, this includes blended learning, which is when you use um, digital tools in the classroom as well as using um, online teaching. And it also includes virtual learning, such as what we are currently doing. And then distance learning, whenever all of us think about distance learning, we think about UNISA. So that's how it works. Students are not normally or they don't usually go to class a lot, but they use um, forums and uh, uh, discussion spaces to communicate and learn. And this also includes digital tools um, such as Microsoft Teams, for example. So that's the difference between face to face digital teaching and distance learning. So now we will look into um, digital teaching further. 
So digital teaching is divided into two. There's synchronized learning and there's also asynchronous learning. So synchronized learning is basically a learning that happens at the same time. So this is where you and your students um, attend a virtual environment together, like we are doing right now. So we are attending a, a virtual session together from different locations, right? And with synchronized learning, you you use the web. So the web conferences, such as tools like Teams or um, Zoom, um, such spaces where we, we join together and we, we work together, right? And then we have asynchronous learning. Asynchronous, asynchronous learning is basically a learning that is more relaxed, um, where people complete work at their own time, um, they access uh, uh, um, discussions, or rather they collaborate online on shared documents, uh, they watch a video, um, and then they answer a quiz. So it's basically more of a self-paced um, completion of work. While synchronous is where you set a specific time for your students that, okay, sure, tomorrow, 11 p 11 a.m. we meeting for a session. That's when we all come together and connect. Um, you set a homework, a due date, and how they should submit. So there's, there's quite a lot in terms of synchronous learning and asynchronous learning to use dig digital teaching for many reasons. Um, one of the reasons is to, to, to maintain contact with your learners. I mean, with COVID-19, it has been very difficult to connect with your students because they are on and off with coming to, to classes, um, with others being sick. So you're trying to maintain contact with your students and you want to also continue teaching and learning so that um, you finish the, the curriculum as well as the learners also continue to learn. And you'd also want to communicate or rather to connect with the school community and um, communicate with each other and work together so that you, you are able to rather you are able to meet these goals that you, you you have set for yourself. We have different reasons why we want to go for digital teaching, and those three goals are just some of them. All right, so things that you must consider as a teacher. So what type of, it, of learning environment works for you? Like I have explained, we have synchronous and asynchronous. Synchronous happens at the same time. We connect on a virtual space. Um, we, we work together, we learn together, we discuss. And then asynchronous is more relaxed where you um, do work at your own pace. So you need to choose what type of learning environment works for you. And you also look at what classes on, and lessons um, you will offer and if there are any additional support you want to provide to your students. So those are the things that you need to consider as a teacher. Now, other things you must consider for your students as well is, do your students have access to a device? Are they sharing the device with the family? Um, is there data expenses? And how can you reduce the bandwidth, you know? Which technologies do you want to use? Emotional needs, um, is there a need um, to connect? Um, how are your students feeling about these digital teaching and how can you make it easier for them? And then now you, you would want to start with a simple tool um, that learners are familiar with or they have access to, and then you work with that. Right, so now we're going to look at how to have access with Microsoft Teams. So one reason others couldn't connect with their um, school account is because probably you don't know your um, accounts or rather you have never accessed uh, or logged into Office 365. So to get started with Microsoft Teams, Microsoft Teams is a platform that allows collaboration and communication where you and your students could work together, as well as your colleagues, where you work together to with documents, with virtuals, with basically anything. You can do so much with Microsoft Teams at a, a tip of an application tool. So to get started, you will need to log on to Office 365. You will need to find 
the Microsoft Teams application, and then you will need to sign in with your Microsoft Teams account. I am going to stop sharing now and actually show you how to do that. OK, I will share my screen again. Please do let me know if I am fast. I don't want to move too fast that you miss something. Also, if you have a question, do let me know. All right, so I am going to log in. So now I'm just going to show you how to log into Office 365 to find Microsoft Teams application as well as to sign into your Microsoft Teams account. So you will go to your 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 Internet so you could use Explorer or you can use Google Chrome and then you will type in Office 365 login. And then when you are here on this platform, you will sign in. Please do remember we have um, accounts for the teachers. If you don't remember it, we will share the account or email that we have received. So you will then sign in. All right, OK, I've already signed in. Um, let me try and log out so I could sign in again. Right, might take some time. OK, so now um, I'll have to switch to a different account and then put in your email address. So it's minus Quintress at schoolnet.org.za and then I will sign in. So from here, um, it will ask me to, it will pick up an account for me with you, it will pick up your GDE account and then you'll select um, the account that you want to use. And then you'll have to put in your password and it will put it, you will end up on this space. So that is how you will log into Office 365. Now, how do you find the Microsoft Teams app? So you'll go to this um, app launcher. And then from here, it will show you um, all the apps that are within Office 365. If you don't find it here, you'll go to all apps. And then you'll scroll down if you want to scroll down or you can search for the app that you want. So once you find it, which is Teams, you will click on Teams. And it will direct you to another page. So it's still loading. Right, it's a bit slow. It's coming. All right. So once it's loading like this, there's an option to download the Microsoft Teams app onto your laptop or to work on your your PC. Right. Um, please note that some of the features are not available on the on the online version and others are available on the um, the app version. So just choose what to work with or what works best with you. Right. So that is how you log in to your Microsoft Teams account. So you go to Office 365 account, you find the Microsoft Teams application, and then you sign into Microsoft Teams account. I hope that is clear. Um, if you do have a question or I am moving too fast, do let me know and I will repeat the step again. Right. So now I will play a video um, explaining how a school district is using Microsoft Teams to collaborate and communicate or rather to connect with their teachers, their students and the community around them. I love walking into those classes. Over the course of the last. How about now? Perfect. Thank you. The last four years, Omaha Public Schools has been in a transformation mode. We really tried to look at what should happen in the classroom today. Many times what you saw was a lack of use of technology within the classroom. And um, what we're doing right now is really purposeful. 
children that are in school now have never lived in an era where there's not been technology right at their fingertips. So it just makes sense to reach them at that level. I love walking into those classrooms to see how kids engage with technology. We talk about the four C's a lot. So it's communication, collaboration, critical thinking skills, and creativity. Teams really does all of them. It's highly collaborative because I have conversations more in real time, more informal, and more consistent. I have the ability to bring in apps that I would use, like OneNote. Then whenever you add video into the mix, I have real time face-to-face -face happening. All those pieces together create an environment that you just don't see in anything today. Well, within Teams, there's instant feedback back to that student and collaboration between students within an environment that's safe and effective for classroom learning. That learning process extends well beyond the confines of a school. Learning can happen just about anywhere. It's just a better way of communicating because if you're not gonna see somebody, you can still communicate with them even though they're not there. Being a teacher, you never have all the answers, so it is nice to be able to collaborate with other team members, whether it be down the hallway, in another part of the building, or in another state. Using Teams is just an easy way to get more ideas on how to reach the kids in the classroom. Teachers get a digital hub for classrooms and professional learning all in one area. There's a lot of power that can come out of that. First and foremost, you have to have amazing teachers. Uh, secondly, I think you have to have great leadership. And then thirdly, I think you need opportunities. Whenever students have the opportunity to connect the dots, that's when learning is purposeful because that's going to drive them to be who they can be. So now that is how you could work together with your students, the community or your colleagues um, in Microsoft Teams. Of course, um, um, they, there's going to be a huge difference or a wide difference between your school and their school, but you're going to use Microsoft Teams to suit your needs. So you will work with what you have and what works best for you. All right, so now I'm just going to show you a few um, features of Microsoft Teams before I jump into the actual Teams platform and take you through how to create a team and how to work together as, um, as, as, as teachers, as students, and as a community. All right, so this is what or what you get when you log into Microsoft Teams. Of course, um, for some of the teachers here, it might not, not be as thoroughly populated as it is here, but it, that's how Teams is, right? And then we'll just take you through the features that Teams have to offer. So with Teams, the space here that is highlighted in yellow is called the me space. And in the me space, you have you have the, the app bar. So in the app bar, you have um, apps such as your activity, your chats, your teams, which is your collaborative space, your meetings where you create events, um, your files, files that you share with your students or your colleagues, as well as, as assignments, if you have created assignments for your students. In the me space as well, you have the left rail. So the left rail is basically what you click on the app bar will appear on the left rail. So here they have selected the teams and these are the teams and channels that are within the collaboration space. So how do you identify a team? The one that has language arts 102 highlighted with a block LA, that is your team. Anything below it, that is your channel. So how you look at it is you have your topic and your subtopics. Your topic would be your team and your subtopics would be your channels. Right. So, for example, you'll have grade 11A and then within um, um, this, the team 11A, you will then have channels such as the subject that you teach them. 
And then we have the Wii space. The Wii space is when you have selected your channel, um, you will see that you are in the team or the collaborative space called Arts, Arts um, Language Arts 101 in the general channel. So the general channel is just basically where communication is sent, where it's accessible to everyone. You can talk everything that is general. And within this channel, you have tabs such as conversations. Those are the conversations that you have. You have files. These are the files that you share um, uh, among each other. You have class notebook if you do add class notebook and you have assignments. So these teacher um, edit um, other tabs such as class notebook, assignments, syllabus, and there's a plus sign here. So this plus sign allows you to add more tabs that you want. And then in, in the Wii space, like I said, what is highlighted in yellow, that is the team name. So you would name it according to what suits you. And then you have the class navigation. So this, this tells you that you are in this in the Lang Language Arts 101 team in the general channel. So it's just to navigate where you are exactly. And then within the Wii space, this is how you identify your team name. So how you see it on your left rail, as well as how you see it on the Wii space. And this is your channel. So this is the, the channel that I was referring to. And then you have the tabs that I was referring to earlier on, your conversation, your files, your class notebook, and so forth. And then here you have your canvas space. Your canvas space is basically you, your workspace where it shows you your Wii space, your tabs, your conversations, and what happens within that space, right? So I have covered um, briefly um, the, the, the features that um, team have to offer. Now I am going to explore or rather show you how team works. Before I move to how team works, do I have a question? I don't see any raised hands or comments on the chat box screen at the moment. All right, thank you. I will just jump in and show you how team works. So you will remember how we logged into Teams you went to your Office 365, you logged in with your accounts, your GDE accounts, and then you select or rather find the, 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 the Microsoft Teams. So this is my Microsoft Teams. Um, this is all everything that we were just referring to now. So this is the team space. Uh, and I have a message in the chat box. So in the chat, there is a register that I would like you to complete. Um, we will share with you just shortly. Um, so there's a register that we'd like you to 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 complete, and we'll also share the link um, within as time goes. Right. So welcome to my team space. Um, and in this team space, we have the app bar that I was referring to. So in the app bar, we have activity. So in the activity, you see your mentions, your notifications, and we have the chat. So the chat is what happens when you are in a meeting and there is chats or conversations between students and the participants in, in, the, in the virtual meeting. So this is where um, it happens. So I can just send everybody a message and hopefully you will see it. Right. So it, it let me know that um, Shokane uh, does no longer have access to the chat, such things. You are able to see who has access to chat and who doesn't have access to chat. And um, you go to Teams. With Teams, this is where you create your collaborative space, your workspace. This is where you collaborate with your students um, and work together. And then you have Calendar. So calendar, this is where you create your virtual meetings or rather your, your virtual sessions with your students. Currently, you can see that 
we were supposed to have a session on the 31st, but we had canceled that and moved it to the 1st of um, September, which is today. So you can uh, schedule a new meeting or you can meet now with your colleagues. We'll come back to that. And then you have calls if you want to make a call. Currently, you could see that my profile has a red um, circle with a minus there. That means that I am in a call and I'm busy and it shows that I am presenting. And then you have files. So these are the files that are available to you. So it could be files that you have shared with your students or files that someone has shared with you. So these are the files that I have under my um, team space. Right, so let me show you how to create a team. Right, so now that you have logged in and you have done all that, let me show you how to create um, a team. So to create a team, you will go to join or create a team. So you'll click join or create a team and then you will create a team. So if you have a code to join a team, you could enter the code, but if you don't have that, you will create a team. So you'll select create a team. And then once you're there, you can either create your team from scratch. So this is when you start your, 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 your basic team, or you can create it from a group or team that is available from Microsoft six, um, 365. If you don't want to go all through or all that um, steps, you can just choose any template that is relevant to you um, and work with that. So we will choose a team from scratch. So uh, remember, a team is a collaborative space. So we will choose a team from scratch. And you can decide what kind of team you want. So you could make it private where people will need your permission to join, or you could make it public. Um, when you make it public, anyone in, in your organization at Tutobotlale can join, right? So anybody who is Tutobotlale can join or rather if it's GDA, G, um, GDE domain, anyone within GDE can join your team. So we will make it public. And then from there, you, you give your team a name. So I will give it Tuto. Right? So, and then you write what your team is about. So this is, um, we will, collaborate and communicate right so this is just a brief example of a description but you can give a thorough description and then you select create so it will create a team once it's created it will say nice work now you are able to add members to to your team right um I'm going to add one member and then I will move and look for um, anyone within Tuto Bukhali that I can um, add to my team. So I'm going to add Zotumo. So Zotumo is my colleague, hence it's easy to add. And if you want to add someone who is not within your organization, you can just type their email address and they will appear as guests. So we will add, uh, let's just make a random email address. We'll say Tuto. Bosali at gmail.com. So whenever you add your email address, you need to wait a bit so that um, uh, teams can locate the email and then you can add them as a guest, right? And then you click on add. Once you have added, you will see that whoever that you have added with a Gmail address or rather a domain that's not within your domain, it will say guest. But anyone within your domain, so within GDE or Tutobotlala's domain, it will ask you whether you want to make them a member or an owner. So for example, if you are a teacher or you, um, there's two teachers that both teach life sciences and they want to work within the same space, you can make them an owner that way they have the same rights as you. And then members, they'll just have the right uh, members rights and they're not going to do anything but become members, right? And then once you have added them, you will then close. 
right? And this is our team. Let me just scroll down so you could see it. So here it is. So we I'm just hovering over. So our team's name is Tutobosale and we are in the general channel, right? So let's say, um, let me just move and see who I can add onto my teams. Uh, right, let's see, let's. Okay, let me, let me try. Okay, let me try Eugene. Okay, let's see if I can add Eugene within my team. Just to show you that if you've added um, your students or teachers within your team and you had forgotten to add another teacher or another student, there is an option to add those um, participants even if you have already created your team. So what you do is on two double sale, on the three dotted bullets, you will select more options. And then from there, you are able to add a member. So you can add a member and you can type in. Let me see if Eugene will appear. OK, Eugene doesn't appear. That means I'll have to find an email address. But that is how you add a member to your teams. So you could just type in their email address and you can add them as guests to your team and then you can close. So whenever you add people to your team, they normally get a notification on their side that they have been added as a member to a specific team. And if you have an, an, an app, it will then add the, the teams onto your app. Right. So now this is Tutor Klali's team. Um, within teams, you can add um, the different grades that are there. And how do you add them? You add them as a channel. So you can add a channel. And this, as I've stated, um, Tutor Bukhale is our main topic and then the channel are the subtopic. So now we could add the life science group or the life science teachers or life science as a subject. And then you can add a description. And then from there, you can add your privacy. So your privacy as in, do you want to be accessible to everyone on Teams or do you want it to be private and only accessible to specific people within Teams? Normally, we just select um, standard, but you could select whichever one you are comfortable with. And then from there, you add um, it. It will be it will be important to select this block because the minute you add it, it will show on everyone that there is a channel called life sciences that has been added. So it will notify your students or rather your participants that there is this channel. Then you add. Right, so you will note that a channel called life science was added. So how do you work within the teams? Remember, we had said that this is your we space where you see that TB is Tutobosale, this is your public team, and then Life Sciences is your channel. So your post, this is where you have your conversations. You can start a conversation with your colleagues. Um, you can mention names. So you can mention names where if you mention um, someone's name or student's name, it will go directly to them and everyone else, um, they won't see the message but you, right? And then you can share files here. On files, you can click on new and you can upload um, uh, or you could add a Word file, an Excel document, so any, any 365 um, documents you can use on Teams. You can upload documents from your computer. You can copy a link that's available. And you can also download your, your files. So your files also, um, Teams can also work as your storage where you put your files that you don't want to go missing. That way you are able to come back onto Teams and you download a file if you, you have misplaced it anywhere. And on channel, you can also add another tab. 
So on this tab, you can add um, any application that you want to use with your students. So for example, if you are having a life science topic about genetics and you want to show them a video, you can add a YouTube video. So you can select on YouTube and you can add it as a tab. It's loading, it's a bit slow. And then you can uh, paste a link of the YouTube video that you have looked for, or you can search for the video. So, um, so genetic, genetics, let's just go for genetics. And then it will show you the videos that you want, and then you select a video that you like. You can post the channel, uh, post to the channel about this tab. So it's always important to post so that students or your colleagues know that there is something that is added onto their teams and then you save. So once you have saved, if I'm a student and I log into our team's call to Dobosale and I go to Life Sciences, I will see that Se has uploaded a video called um, DNA, chromes, genes, and so forth. And then I will watch the video and um, post about the video. So from here, I it, it shows that I have post uh, I have added a tab called um, DNA, chromes, and genes, which is a YouTube video. And you could reply and say and tell your students um, to watch the video. So that way your student knows that, OK, I need to watch this video because it will be part of our session or part of our uh, uh, our topic for for class today or tomorrow or so forth. So this is how you collaborate with your students. You also have these um, tabs right here when you you when you start a new conversation if there's a student that you're impressed with i mean now we are we have students that like gifs you can add a gif where you tell them well done you can let them know that bravo if they have answered a question correctly you can add a sticker and you can also edit um the sticker um that you want to use with your students so that way you encourage your students while they are uh, um, communicating with you or they are participating that they are doing well so you are also able to add a and in a, a, a formative assessment or a quiz by adding a link or rather adding a tab called forms or a question or if you have a poll that you want. So you could add different tools to your conversation. You could add a YouTube video. You could add a Quizlet. Uh, news, if there's any news that you want your student to read, if they, you want them to be informed with regards to COVID-19 and what's the new update, you can also add news and you can add um, so many options. You can attach a document that you want them to collaborate on. So there's so many things that you could do with Microsoft Teams so that you um, collaborate and you work together. Right. So let me just show you a few options that are under your teams. You can manage your team. So you can manage your team when you go to manage your team. You could see who's the owner of this team. You could see who are the members and the guests and you can delete people if you don't want them there. And um, you can see the channels that are there. It's only the general channel. This is where you talk everything general. And then we have the life science channel, which is everything life science. And you can click that it shows for you and it shows for the members or vice versa. 
and then you have the settings. So the settings here, you can just um, select what works for you. You can change the picture of your team. You can put a group picture. You can edit your members' permissions. What do they have access to? So if you want your members to have limited access, you can just select what they have access to, same as your guests and so forth. You can check your analytics. Um, how many apps do you have? How many users do you have under this team? Um, how interactive are they? You can also check the apps that are available for you to use. Um, you could delete if you don't want them. You can check more apps. Assume that there is no question. Right. Um, OK, so that is your team and that is how it works. Um, like I've said, you are able to create a meeting as well. So if you want to have a meeting with your colleagues or you want to create a virtual session like we are having right now with your students, you can go to your calendar or you can go to your specific channel that you want your meeting to be under. And here where there is a video that has meet, you can drop um, uh, select the drop down arrow and you can meet now, meaning that you'll have a meeting right now or you can schedule a meeting. So when you select schedule a meeting, you are able to schedule a meeting that you'll have with your students or your colleagues. So just a quick show of how it works. Um, we will say. Right, so we'll just say genetics. Um, introduction. And then you can add your attendees. Um, it's, you can add your attendees. You can add Zotumo to attend this meeting. You can add um, anyone else um, with their email addresses, or you could just leave it as it is. And then you will select the date of when the meeting is. Maybe the meeting's on the 2nd of September and your class will start at 9 a.m. and then we'll finish at um, 10. Then you know you have an hour with your students. And then you can, if you want to have these sessions um, repeating, then you can go to repeat every weekday or weekly or monthly, depending on what works for you. And then here it just shows you that this meeting will be under a team called Tutobukhali and the channel called Life Sciences. And then here on the meeting details, you type um, your instructions to your students or your colleagues. If you want them to read a document before the meeting, you let them know. And then once you have done so, Right, so you give them the instruction and then you can let them know the date again to September and then time. You let them know it's 9 a.m. Right, and then you send it to your students. So once you send it to your students, it will automatically create a link that you can share with your students regarding um, regarding the the, the session or the meeting that you have scheduled. So when you click to see the meeting details and you scroll down, you should be able to see your meeting link. So this is what you will copy and share with your students. So you will copy this and share with your students. That way, this is how they will use or this is what they will use to join the meeting. So this is how or rather this is how you use or what you use to join the meeting. All right. OK, so now that's how. That's how you you join the meeting and that's how the students will join the meeting, right? So how does it appear on your calendar? When you go on your calendar, it, it should show. 
Okay, it looks like we have selected a wrong date, but it will show on your calendar that on this day there is a meeting called one, two, three. Right, so that's how it works. On the 2nd of September at 9 a.m., we have a session here. So every time you do something on Teams, um, it will post on the posts tab. That way everybody knows what's going on. Everybody's in the loop about what's going on. So everyone who's a member, who's a guest, once you post under the, the, the post tab, they will know what is going on. So let me just show you how to share a file. So you can upload a file from your laptop. So you will click on upload or go to files tab, click on upload, click on files if you want to um, load a file, and then you will click on QR code, and then you will open. And then here's a file. Um, you can also copy the link and share it with people. You can download it. You can use it as a uh, an online drive where you share your documents, that way they don't go missing. So our session recap, we have explored the difference between face-to-face -face teaching, digital teaching, as well as distance learning. Um, we've told you about the consideration that are required with digital teaching, such as access to devices, bandwidth, um, how students are feeling. Um, we have a challenge for you um, just before our next session. So our, for, for our next session, this is what we'd like you to do before that session. We would like you to create um, and name a team. So we'd like you to create a team, give your team a name that suits your team, invite a few of your teachers to test how your team works, uh, we would like you to add two channels. So the channels you would add could be your grade, the grades that you teach or the subjects that you teach. Um, and post a comment in, in your team. So make it active. So that is our challenge to you. Create and name your team. Invite your teachers. Create two channels and name your channel according to um, your classes, your topics, or your student groups. And then once you have done that, we would like you to post a comment in the team and just to test how your team works. Right, so that is your challenge. We will share the challenge as well via email so that you don't forget what your challenge is before our next session on the 7th. Right, so that would be it so now we're going to get social a bit do follow us on our social media platforms we are school net south africa on facebook school net south africa on instagram and school net sa on twitter uh before we we finish there is another um digital platform i'd like you or like a digital a digital program that I'd like you to consider. The name of the program is the Commonwealth um, Digital Education Leadership Training in Action. In short, it is called C Delta. So basically, T C Delta is a a program that promotes digital education um, environments in in the community in the communities. So we would like to offer this uh, free program to you. Um, YC Delta, it offers digital skills training. Um, it also focuses on teachers as well as students, and you are creating lifelong long learning. And what is lovely with C Delta is that you have access, once you complete the pre and the post test, you have access to 35 SACE points for the year. So you are able to gain 35 um, SACE points. So this is the C Delta platform that would like you to, to do. So you can log into the C Delta platform. You can register. When you register on the C Delta platform, you can put in your name, your surname, um, your email address, a password, 
and you join as part of a project group and that will be SchoolNet South Africa and you will select a user which is a teacher and you mark as not a robot and then from there you will complete a pretest. So remember, this is um, digital skills learning and lifelong learning. So this is where you get to understand things, such things as your um, digital identity, how you are viewed on the internet, um, digital safety. So you learn such um, with regards to C Delta. So you can take a pretest. So a pretest is just to get your understanding of um, how uh, digital your digital skills or your digital understanding, and then you will go through the modules under this course, and then you take your post test. Once you've taken your post test, you will then get a certificate that will show you that you have completed um, the pretest and post test, and then you will email it to us, and then we will provide you with your 35 says points certificate and then we'll share it with says. So um, the modules that are there with C Delta, it's developing digital identities, mobilizing resources. So with digital identities is what, how are you viewed on the internet? If I were to, to search you right now, what will I find? Because remember that on the internet, um, when we post there, a lot of things remain there almost forever. Even if you have deleted it, it remains forever. So we need to develop a digital identity that is good, that is that that does not put us in the in a bad name. That makes us look good in the eyes of maybe our potential um, employers and so forth. Um, then we have mobilizing resources. How do you get resources that work for you? Um, so this is the, the 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 modules that we have under C Delta that you'll have to complete to get your 35 says points. So how do you register? You go to https uh, forward slash forward slash c delta dot call dot org. So this is um, if you are keen on doing the C Delta, uh, please drop us an email. And we will take you step by step on how to register for C Delta. All right. Um, thank you for joining us today. Um, please don't forget to fill in the register. Uh, you can find the register on https uh, forward slash forward slash bitly.ly forward slash 38Z9ID2. So do complete the register and the survey and let us know how you're feeling with regards to incorporating Microsoft Teams in your school. Um, and if you have any questions, if you are overwhelmed, if you need help, please do contact me via email. My email address is, let me write it for you. My email address is, okay, this does wanna be friendly, okay. Email address is quintress at schoolnet.org.za. If you need assistance, alternatively, you could contact Zotumo at schoolnet.org.za. If you have any questions, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you need us to take you through Teams one more time so it could be easier for you, let us let us know we could assist you um, to get better at it. So this is our email addresses if you need help, if you need us to take you through the content or to just help you settle in in terms of Microsoft Teams. All right, do drop us an email if you have an interest in C Delta and you'd like to join the C Delta program to get the 35 says points um, and also to build your digital skills and just to promote lifelong digital learning 
in the community. If you are interested to drop us an email and let us know that you're interested. If you're struggling with teams, let us know. We will share the recording um, hopefully by the end of this week before our next session. That way you are able to um, go through the content before our next session. Don't forget our challenge to you um, to create and name a team, to add a few teachers and um, two channels, and also um, create conversation within your team. Um, I would also like to, to say something about the C-Delta program, uh, Q. I just want to put it out there that um, uh, Commonwealth of Learning is an international company organization and um, the certificate that you um, get after completing your pre and post test is an international uh, recognized, which is I think that's uh, great. Um, I will also share uh, via email, hoping everybody has filled in the register. So that in that way, I'll be able to have your, your email addresses and stuff. I'll share the steps um, on how to register on the C-Delta platform. And yeah, so I'll be available as well for any questions anyone has regarding today's session. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for joining. That will be the end of our session today. Um, don't forget your challenge. I'm excited to see your teams. Please do invite me on your teams as well um, with the same email addresses that we have added there. Um, Quintress at schoolnet.org.za or Zoduma at schoolnet.org.za. Um, we would like to see the teams that you add, um, create the teachers and also the comments that you have while you create your teams. Thank you so much for joining our session today. Hope to see you next week.